Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hangdal Chita. Thus I have heard. At one time, Shoju and Sid were sitting in a zindo meditating. And Master Munan rang the bell and came to the doorway of his chamber and waved them both to come in and talk to him. And he sat down and they seated themselves in front of him and Sid said, wow, cool place, dude. Moonan said, boys, I'm old and I'm kind of sick and I don't have a whole lot of students and I guess you two are the best I can come up with. So before I pass away, I wanted to make sure that I pass along the Dharma to you guys as my successors. Shoju bowed and Sid said, cool, man. Moonan said, I have this book here that has been passed down for seven generations from masters to students. And each teacher has added his own commentary to it. It's very valuable. And I want you to take it and keep it to carry on the teachings of my lineage. Sid says, wow, I, I, that's, that's an honor. But Shoju said, Master, we received your Zen without writing. I'm satisfied with that as it is. I don't need the book. Moonan said, but it's, it's, it's really cool. I think you should take it. Sid said, okay. And Shoju said, no, nah, I, I don't want it. Maybe you should keep it. Moon said, but no, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of my teaching. Here, take it. And Shoju grabbed it and threw it into the fireplace where it immediately caught on fire and started burning. And Moonen got very angry and he said, what are you doing? And Shoju yelled, what are you saying? And Sid said, hey, I was going to read that. A lot of the, the talks I give... Uh, I, I kind of make fun of books and and uh, Young Jin has has commented many times on a poem I wrote a, a long time ago making fun of books and you might get the sense that I don't care much for the map. I, it's actually the opposite. Um, I love books. I love to read. I love to study. I have throughout my life filled bookshelves upon bookshelves with them. I grew up in a house full of books with a, a father who taught philosophy and ethics and humanities. Um, and I love different translations. I, you know, I, and at any given time, I could have four or five translations of the same text. And over the years, I've gathered many of them on Buddhism, on Zen, various schools. And it's not that I don't love them, respect them, enjoy them when I have half a chance to devour them. It's that the focus on the text is not the point of Zen. There's, there's a Sanskrit word, padaparama, which refers to one whose highest level of attainment is the word of the text and not the sense of it. One for whom a, a literal sense takes precedence. And in Zen, the literal sense is frequently the opposite of what is being shown. In fact, often the teacher is pointing the way to see something and not what to be seen. So what are we to make of that in, in the Zen tradition? What, what does Padaparama mean when we say, well, have you read this book or studied that text? Does it mean we throw them all away, we burn them all into the fire? No. But did the story say that Bodhidharma was carrying a sack full of books when he walked to China? And by textual 
meanings that includes, you know, the one finger held up or the clap or the silence or, or any time we focus, we concentrate on a specific meaning because Zen is not something you can conquer intellectually. It's not a word puzzle that, that you sit with in the back of your magazine and try and find it. It's not a crossword where you're sitting there at two o'clock in the morning going, oh God, 1943 film noir. Who was the a actress that played Betty Boop? It might be a bunch of blank spaces that you just sit there and let capture you like a, a Hwadu, a Kongan, until something fills them in and immediately you realize you've probably got the wrong answer anyway. And it might have been better to leave them blank. So what does our tradition say about this? So San, uh, we'll talk about a book because we use words to say don't use words. Uh, so San's book, Mirror of Zen, one of the most famous ones in our tradition, he mentions this several times. A couple of, of the ones that seem most poignant are, are case 12, where he says, among other things, it is extremely important that Zen practitioners should pursue live words and not dead words. A live word is grabbing the point of the Hadu and hanging on. A dead word is grabbing a conceptual meaning. And in case 54, he said, when studying the sutras, reflect deeply on our own mind. If not, you could study the entire canon and it would do no good. Just mouthing words is like a bird chirping or an insect buzzing. And then he went on to quote the words of another teacher, because here we go with the words again, Kui Feng. Interpreting texts and analyzing them, analyzing the meaning of words, merely produces heaps of desire, anger, and ignorant, mistaken views. So what are we to do with the words, the books, the scriptures, the sutras, the texts, all those things that we carry around like another pile of stones that we carry with us, just like our anger, greed, and delusion, another pile of stones, another weight that we hold up. He harmed me. He wronged me. This should be different. I should be better. That shouldn't have happened. All these books, if used incorrectly, become the same thing. And to use another one that, that I know Myung Jin hates, the book is just the raft, man. When you get to the other shore, let it get wet and roll down the stream. It's all good. Remember the truth of the meaning. Remember the, the flower that's twirled or the Pilates ball that's headed the loft or the apple that may or may not ever be an apple.